What is the North-South Divide? I can hear you asking. Well, I am here to tell you that it is the socio-economic and cultural differences between the North and the South of the UK. And by socio-economic, we just mean things that are related to people and money. So it might be the average incomes, it might be life expectancy, um, it might be the number of qualifications a person has. By cultural differences, that's quite a broad term that could mean all sorts of things. That could include accents, so the way people speak. It could include traditions that are celebrated in different parts of the country, or even things like different foods that are eaten in different parts of the country. Now, where exactly this north-south divide uh, can be found is a question that lots of academics have been debating and discussing over the past 20 to 30 years. One professor of geography in particular, Danny Dorling, who works at the University of Oxford, did some uh, research in 2017 to, to try and plot exactly where this divide can be located. And this is what he came up with. So you can see in the very north of the map that this north-south divide line starts just south of Grimsby, which is in Yorkshire, and it moves almost diagonally in a southwesterly direction right across England until it reaches Gloucestershire right down in the southwest of the country. Okay, You can see that Birmingham there is north of the line, so we would be considered to be in the north of the north-south divide, and places like Leicester and Warwick would be considered to be in the south in terms of the north-south divide. Now this line is obviously not based on compass points and physical geography, it's based on lots and lots of different data about those socio-economic differences that exist between uh, different parts of the country. Now in general, his research and lots of other research about the North-South Divide shows that people living in the North, so those who are North or West of that line, are typically poorer, they're less healthy and they're less educated compared to those people living to the south or east of that line, so living in the south of the UK. So if we go back to our original definition of the North-South Divide, it might be more appropriate to get rid of that word differences and actually use the term inequalities, because these differences are examples of inequality. They are unfair. So you might be thinking, well, what evidence is there that proves or supports the idea of this north-south divide existing? So I'm going to talk you through a couple of different examples to show you kind of how widespread the evidence and the research actually is. So if we start with health, we've got um, two maps here which are split into men and women showing the average life expectancy for people across England. Now, it's split into men and women because they have different life expectancies anyway for a different set of reasons. But what we can clearly see here is that uh, people living in the south of the UK, so in places like London, they are much more likely to live longer than people living in the north, so in places like the northeast or the northwest. If we focus on the female map as an example and we compare London to the northeast of England, there is a difference of 2.5 years which means women living in London are likely to live two and a half years longer than women living in the North East. And the same pattern can be seen in the male map as well. Now, life expectancy is quite a broad measure of people's health, but this same pattern can be found in more specific examples as well. If we look at this second map, this is showing um, the number or the percentage of adults who are considered to be overweight. And we can see that the lowest area, again, is London, with only 57.3% of adults considered overweight, whereas the highest is the North East, in the north of England, uh, with a rate of 68%. So more than two thirds of adults are considered to be overweight. Again, the same pattern can be uh, seen if we look at rates of cancer uh, across the country. It's those same two or three areas that are topping um, the rates. We've got nor the North East, the North West and Yorkshire, who all have um, higher than 600 cancer cases per 100,000 people. If we look now at an economic indicator, let's focus on income and jobs. We can see the same pattern is being reflected across the UK. 
This first map here shows the um, amount of disposable income that the average person has. So disposable income is the money you have left over once you've paid for your necessities, so things like rent and bills and so on. We can see clearly on this map that, what a surprise, London again is the area which has got um, the best, it's got the highest amount of disposable income and it's areas that are in the north of the UK, like the North East or Yorkshire uh, and even the West Midlands in this case, that have got the lowest amount of disposable income. So they've got the least amount of money left at the end of the month once they've paid off um, all of their necessities. We can see the same trend again if we look at this map, um, which is quite an old map now, I think it's about 10 years old, but it's showing rates of unemployment. So uh, again, the darker the colour, the more unemployed people there are as a percentage in that area. And we can see that the areas which have um, less than 2% of people unemployed are mainly found in the south of England. And the areas which are um, in kind of those top three bands are found in the north, particularly around big cities like Birmingham, Manchester and even Glasgow and Edinburgh um, in Scotland. Now, this same pattern is reflected in this third map, which is looking at people claiming um, work related benefits. So as you would expect, that pattern is very similar to uh, the pattern that we can see there on the second map. So all three of these maps are suggesting that if you live in the south of England or the south of the UK, you are more likely to have more money and to be employed with a good job. So one of the big questions that this raises is what has caused this north-south divide to form in the first place? And there isn't just one single cause or reason why this has happened. There are lots of different factors that have worked together to create this particular um, set of differences and divisions. For example, deindustrialization um, is a really key contributing factor. If you think about where the majority of our industries were located, things like mining or car manufacturing, they were mainly found in sort of northern areas, so um, the northeast of England, um, the northwest areas in the West Midlands, that's where lots of our industries were concentrated. So when deindustrialization happened and lots of those industries closed down for lots of different reasons, that left huge amounts of uh, people in the north of England unemployed, creating a massive difference in the unemployment rate between the north and the south of the UK. A second cause or contributing factor is globalisation. And globalisation might have benefited lots and lots of different businesses all across the United Kingdom, but it's particularly benefited um, the city of London because it's kind of enabled London to become a global city where lots of um, businesses want to be based and because of that that's led to jobs being created um, in London at a far faster rate than have been created anywhere else and that almost creates um, a kind of unfair attraction because it, it means more people are likely to move to London because that's where the most jobs are and therefore um, they are leaving behind those areas that they have left. But actually, in addition to deindustrialization and globalization, which are somewhat historical factors, um, another kind of current issue that's contributing to the North-South divide is government spending. You can see on this infographic here that in London, more than £9,000 is spent on average per person um, who lives in London. Whereas if you look at the spending for the East Midlands, so places like Leicester, it's less than £7,000 per person overall. And so um, if we think about the example of health, if there's less government spending being spent on hospitals and healthcare infrastructure, it's perhaps um, kind of not surprising that that then leads to um, a decline in, in people's health. So the amount of money that the government is spending on different public services like healthcare and education and transport, that is also um, continuing to kind of embed the north-south divide that has formed.